Welcome to Reading Java Code Module 3, where we will talk about variable types. Well, we won't talk about all the different variable types. We will talk about the most common, because going into all the variable types is beyond the scope of this series. This is just, again, to educate you on how to read and understand the code that you will encounter in your career or in your curriculum. Here we go. So, a string is something that is contained inside quotes. A string can be any alphanumeric character. What that means, a string could be a number, a symbol, a letter, a group of letters. They must be contained inside of double quotes in order to be a string. Do not confuse the single quote with a double quote. Okay? Let's do not confuse that. All right. So, again, a string is inside of double quotes and it can be alphanumeric. Now, I'm going to talk about something interesting about strings after I go through the other ones. Since we're moving on to integers, an integer is known as an int and is defined and is written as such. An integer can only be a number. It can only be a whole number. It can only be an absolute number. It cannot have a decimal. A number is a number, and an integer has to be a whole number. So, and it is not contained inside of quotes. If you put quotes around this here, double quotes, it becomes a string. Because, again, like I said, a string will become, can be alphanumeric. A double which is similar to a number, is a number that does have decimal with numbers beyond the decimal point. So, you can have 1.23493, that is a double number. It is a number that has a decimal point and digits beyond the decimal. Okay? A float is a different kind of number. Even though I have F salary here, you would never use a float for F salary or when using financial numbers or data, you would never use a float for a salary. You would use a double for a salary, but not a float. So I put that there just to drive home a point that a verbal name could be whatever you want it, but since you want a name or you want names to be relevant or you want them to relate to the, the value or the data will hold, this should probably not say salary. This should say something like, um, uh, let me think of a number, probably like a number that is based on a computation of a very large number is what it would best be used for. The thing with floats, you have to put this F behind it to signify that this is a float value. If you do not put this F here, you will get an error message that will tell you that data type is not float or data type incompatible. I just might bring up the NetBeans IDE just to simulate what the error messages are. And finally, Boolean or Bool. Bool can only hold two values. While it appears to be a string, it is not a string. You, a Bool can hold either false or true. Do not surround it with the double quotes because it would no longer be a Boolean. It would be a string. This is the only time letters or a word can be used without 
quotation marks, the double quotation marks, is for Boolean values. Do not confuse the two. Again, a bool is false or true. So I said I was going to simulate some of this in my IDE. Hold on one second while I bring up my NetBeans IDE. Okay, here we go. We have the NetBeans IDE up. And I'm going to key in a couple of those values that I was just talking about uh, for variables. So here we go. And here's the interesting thing. This is what I kind of do. I have a program that runs some source code. And I can just add it in here. And it doesn't hurt anything. So for instance, we talked about a string. And what I want to show you interesting about a string is this. A string name equal double quotes John like that. So therefore, John is equal to S name. So we could use S name to see what John's name is. So I could do something like this. And this is for demonstration purposes only. When I do that, I take the double quotes out because now the string is the string because keep in mind, this is the string. So this is the same as this. So this would be the same as me doing this. This is what variables do. This would be the same because S name contains John just like that. So therefore, I can write S name. So if I run this, I will get two different lines. So we can say this. So here we go. I'm going to run this. As you can see, we got Hello World and John because S name represents John. Now, what I want to tell you about string. String is not a primitive verbal type, which means it has to have a capital letter. All the other verbal types can be lowercase. So if I do string like this, look what happens. We get an error message and we hover over this and it tells us, cannot find symbol class string. There's no class for that. So keep in mind, this is one of the common ones you would use that has to be a capital letter. Okay, let's change this. Watch what happens when I get rid of this. We're going to move on to integer. Well, let me go back to string real quick. I want to demonstrate some of the other things that can happen. Um, I'm going to double, I'm going to do this again. I'm going to talk about error messages again later, but I, I just want to touch on them now since I'm here with the string. So like I told you, strings have to be inside of double quotations. So if I remove the double quotes, it doesn't like that. It says verbal John. It thinks John is a verbal because it's not in quotes. Right here. We can put John, if John was a verbal, in there, but John is not a verbal. So therefore, it is looking for this to be a variable. So when it's not surrounded by quotes, it's, it's not, it should be a verbal. But when it has quotes, it should be a string. Okay. Uh, like I told you, numbers could be in here. We could do that. We could put some symbols in here. All these things are legal inside of a string. I'll run this again so you can see it. See right there, John 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, 3, 4, and all the symbols I typed, as long as it's inside, okay? Enough on strings. Let's now do an integer. If you notice, I always put the verbal type in lowercase right in front of it. Uh, some people do this. I prefer to join it together. It looks neater, looks cleaner. And I'm going to say it's equal to that. Boy, we have another error. This verbal, it has not been defined. That's what it says. Cannot find symbol, which symbol is variable. Okay? So what we have to do now is put I number. See? Error goes away. We run it. And we get that number there. Now, if we try to put that number in quotes, because it's a string, it will tell us it don't like that. 
incompatible types, string cannot be converted to integer. A string cannot be converted. See, this is an integer here, which means it has to be a number. I know what you're thinking. Well, isn't this a number? Yes, it's a number, but it's the not, not, not the right type of number. This is considered a double, as you can see. It says possible lossy version from double to integer. Basically, what it means is the precision of this will could be lost if you convert it. So this would probably convert down to just a three. It would round down because this four is sitting right here. It would round down, so you would lose some of the precision that is necessary. So you can't do that either. So I know you're thinking, well, maybe we can do that other thing with the F. Well, it says the same thing. It doesn't like that. Incompatible type. And if we converted it, it would convert to probably 4 since this 8 is above 5. So we can't do that. That's how we deal with those numbers. Now, let's put in a double. Make that easy. All I did was just change the first letter. D, double for D. Right there. We print this now. We will see that the double number has printed. And that could be also said for all the other types. So I'm not going to go through the rest of them. Just wanted you to see what goes on with how to define a verbal. This is how you define a verbal. You have to declare the type. Give a name for the variable, and we like to say use a useful name because we could have simply did this, D, right? D is an acceptable variable name, but when you're working with a program, what does D mean? We have no idea when we look at D right here. What does it represent? We could put Z. We have no clue what Z represents, but it will run because it's a legal name. See right here, it printed it. But you want to use something useful. So we can say something like double salary here. So we would change that to salary. And we would make this someone's salary for real. Can't use commas. So we say this person makes uh, $150,000 because they are a smart developer. And we would just run that. And that person would make, uh, see, it truncates. You would need to format this value. We're not going to cover it here. That can be formatted to show the final zero. But anyway, just wanted to show you the different types. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And now we will move on to quiz number four on variables. See you then.